Hey guys, Daniel here, aka Hashlips, and welcome to the final video of this series. This is actually the video where we will be implementing the front end, the IPFS, and everything to mint the NFT. Perfect, so let's get started. We can now, um, just to make sure everything is running, make sure that your terminal is running Ganache CLI. Um, like we had and also just to double check maybe just run truffle migrate dash dash reset just to make sure we're working with the um, latest smart contract that we have and once everything is uh, successful we can go ahead and start um, running the app so next what you want to do is say yarn start like I said before, this will start up a development server and display it on the browser for us, our DAP. And there we go. We now need to make sure that on MetaMask, we connect it to the test network and that we have at least the account connected, like I showed you. We can make sure that if we click connect, we can see the name smart contract. So let's quickly go back to our app.js. We can close everything else. And let's just briefly look through this um, file. So what we have is we have a bunch of imports at the top. We've got a styled button coming from um, the styled uh, components library. Like I told you, this is how we can create a styled button. So that's pretty cool. Just adding some padding. It's sitting outside of the app component itself. And inside here we have this patch. This is all Redux stuff. These are hooks to make it easier for us to select um, the data on our uh, Redux. And then we're grabbing the blockchain state from our Redux um, state management, right? And we're also grabbing the data. Now, in just a brief second, I'm going to look at the data quickly. In data, we've got this fetch data function, which basically goes and fetches um, all the data that we need from our smart contract. Currently, it's fetching the name, which is perfectly cool because we display the name if we look in our browser over there, smart contract. But this is not what we want to do. We want to now change this. So we're going to change this just in a bit. But if we carry on throughout the file, you'll see that I have a use effect in here. And this basically makes sure that we do have an account and we do have a smart contract that's linked and this usually gets filled in when you click connect on metamask and once that is done then i want to fetch the data and i'm also passing in an account because if you look at the data actions this fetch data um, takes an account it doesn't use it currently but it will use it um, in our app so uh, you just pass that in as um, good practice right for if we need to do something with the current account and then we have a dependency here in our uh, use effect, which is the smart contract on the blockchain itself uh, on our Redux state and dispatch. Perfect. When we come down to our actual component rendering, rendering is we can see that we've got a screen wrapper which wraps all the content in the screen. So if I minimize that, you can see it's just a screen component. Then we have this if else check and this check is very similar to the one in the use effect, but this is kind of in reverse because um, this is basically checking if the account also is empty and if uh, the state on the blockchain doesn't have a, the smart contract, um, basically then the user is not connected. And we then display the connected screen, which is everything from here to here. And if you want to see how that looks, we can refresh the app and this is the part that you see connect to the blockchain with a connect button and there we have it connect to the blockchain with the connect um, button over there perfect and once we hit the connect um, button once we click it it's gonna go and dispatch on our blockchain the redux state um, it's gonna grab this function and call it and then connect okay that's basically how it works and then once you're inside, obviously the else conditional will pull you inside of the app, which is the next screen where we display the name and then check interestingly enough from the data, we grab the name. And if we look at the data actions again, or the reducer, um, if I might say, the initial state has a name 
uh, variable which gets populated via our smart contract uh, if we call a name. Now name is just a variable in our smart contract which was our previous smart contract um, as well, right? But coincidentally it also has a name function, the one that we have now. But anyway, we're going to change these things. I just wanted to run through the actual page with you so that when we start changing things, you're comfortable and you know where we are on the page. Next thing we want to do is actually use some kind of canvas in our DAP, uh, which we can pull data from. So, you know, in, your, in my previous tutorials, you could have now created an NFT on a canvas if you did it here on the web browser and you can use that for an example. But I thought it would be cool to use kind of this library, which is an NPM library package that you can download and it's React Signature uh, Canvas. Basically, this canvas allows you just to draw and save the data. So what we're going to need is actually to import it and also install it. Now, if you go back to the application, you see in the um, actual package.json, I've already included this for you in the um, package. So you probably already have installed it when you ran yarn add or npm install. If not, just install that. So what we want to do is right here at the top, import the signature canvas um, to make sure that we have it. And then we want to go down to the section where we actually um, after we've logged in and connected to the DAP. So what we can do is we can now define this um, signature canvas and we define it like so, like this. And there we go. So we already have the signature canvas. What I also want to do is maybe just uh, change this. So we can maybe say, welcome, um, mint your, I don't know, mint your signature sounds cool okay uh we're going to do that but we also want to include a spacer so um, i'm using s dot spacer large would be fine just to give you guys a, again a reference of where i'm getting that remember i'm pulling everything from our global styles file and um, that's how i get the spacer and if you just go to the styles uh, folder and click on global styles here you'll, you'll see um the spaces that I'm using. I'm also going to be making use of the text. So I'm just going to save this once and then I'm just going to continue using them. Perfect. I'm going to save this um, and let's go back to our DAP and see what changed. Okay. Obviously, because uh, we need to make sure that it's running. So let's just um, press yarn start again and then it should be running. So there we go. Uh, we can connect and it says, welcome, mint your, okay, mint you. So mint your signature. Cool. And then we have our signature, but we can't see this um, at the moment. So we have some properties on here, which we can change. So the first thing that we pro most probably want to change is the canvas um, props. Um, this thing has like a canvas props on it and we can give it a uh, width of 350 maybe and also a height of 350 that should be fine um, our canvas should be there now so let's connect and see well it is there so we can't see it because um, this is a gray background and it's transparent but how cool is this anyway um, i'm going to go back and just add some color to it so this probably has a background color it does so let's give it a color so what would be a nice color to give it? Maybe let's try um, three, two, seven and one BF. That would be a, what color would this be? Let's see, a blue color. Um, and that's fine, right? Uh, it's not gonna be pretty, this app, but that's not the point. Uh, we've, we've got our canvas working, okay? So the next step for us is to actually have a button that we can click to say mint. And then once we mint, let's try and extract the canvas data that we have on this canvas to a buffer and into image data. Next, what we want to do is actually define a reference to our canvas object in order for us to extract the data. Now you can have use, use ref um, to reference a element on the page. So let's go ahead and use that. Just make sure it's imported there at the top. And then over here where we define our variables, uh, we can say const 
and let's call it element ref like so and we're going to equal this to use ref perfect now that's just going to equal um, equal empty right because it needs something to grab to grab hold of now a thing that you can do is scroll down to your canvas object now this will also be your normal canvas if you're using a normal canvas so if this uh, question pops up in the video just take note that you can put this reference on any HTML element all right perfect now once we have that we we're ready to go the next thing that we actually need is some kind of button so let's actually go and copy this button over here because this button is our style button we've defined just a little bit of padding for a style button but anyway copy that um, the style button so copy and then we would like to paste it over there and we're going to say space we also want to give it a spacer again so s dot spacer let's do that um, it's not going to call the dispatch function and because we are using the on click we just have to say prevent default first before we do anything else otherwise it might reload the page or that do something weird um, so anyway we're going to call this button mint so if we head back we can see there's our mint button and it doesn't do anything yet okay perfect if we open the console um, you can see that nothing nothing is happening okay so that is perfect I'm going to close that off go back to our function uh, go back to the project because now we need to create the function <laughs> okay perfect so we're gonna need some kind of thing here so um, let's maybe say get uh, image data or you know what let's call it start start minting process how does that sound start minting process I think that's perfectly cool um, we're gonna say cool let's start the minting process and we're gonna define a function up here now we need two things here so we're probably gonna need this start minting process function um, let's just define it quickly and now in here we need to kind of extract whatever is in that um, canvas element but I'm gonna separate it into two files um, well two functions because uh, just to keep our code nice and concise so let's maybe create another function which will say get image um, data okay that's perfectly cool and then I'm gonna make it an arrow function like so perfect these functions don't really need to take in anything uh, we're not going to make them peer functions that just basically going to be helpers um, that helps us around in this page so the first thing that we really want to do is in getting the image data firstly um, just to make sure it's going to get called we will put get image data in start minting so that we just know it's going to get called um, and then we can define the get image data okay so we're going to write const and then canvas um, so this is the canvas element it is going to be equal to the element ref dot current now element ref dot current means get the current reference of this element on the html page uh, and we already know that we do have the canvas element there so we're good to go then we need another um, a constant variable uh, maybe it's let's call this uh, a let variable and let's make data url we'll call it data url and then we'll reference our canvas element we'll say to data and now i have to think about this i think it's url to data url to data url takes in a parameter which is what type of data it, it wants to put out to so here you have to just specify um, that it's going to be an image and format png um, and that's the format that we want this variable to hold and convert everything on the canvas to all right simple enough the next thing is we can define another variable and this time we're going to create a buffer we're creating a buffer now because later on when we're using the ipfs to upload ipfs is going to require a buffer 
to kind of upload it to um, the cloud, you know, to the decentralized storage space. So we are just for now going to export a buffer here as well. So what you can do is you can define, you can define a buffer. And in here, we are basically going to pass this data URL, so like this data that we've now extracted from the canvas, and we're going to split it. Okay. After we've split it, we need to split this um, via a comma. And then because this is going to be array, we need to select the second element in that array. And then we need to say this is going to be base 64. Um, okay, so I have to be honest here. Um, I don't know completely why you need to do this. But basically what it does is this data is a base 64, I believe. And in order for us to create a buffer, we need to explicitly extract um, the, the particular section of that base 64. That's how I understand it. Anyway, we're not going to ponder upon that too much. We're just going to return our buffer. Now, we won't see anything happen in here yet. So what I want to do is just before it returns, right? Or actually, um, uh, not before it returns. Yes, let's do it before it returns. Let's console.log the buffer, okay? And I'm doing this so we can just see it happen on the front end. So we have our minting function. I'm going to say inspect and we have our screen here on the right hand side we have our console running we've got a bunch of linting errors uh, which is just um, syntax wise so don't pay attention to that it's fine uh, we're going to click mint over there and guess what we see we see this array this buffer of image data and if we draw something on this uh, image and we say mint again you can see that the image data changes and that's because the content changes and the data changes. So this buffer is needed to actually upload the image to IPFS. So in the next section, what we're going to have a look at is seeing how we can now take this image data that we have and actually start the minting process. We are at the point where we want to start minting our NFT. We already have a method that can get the buffer of the image, but we need to now create the metadata and upload it to IPFS. Once that's uploaded, we can actually then go ahead and mint it on the blockchain. So let's go ahead and do that next. So the first thing that we need to do uh, before we start is we need to have this import. Now this is already imported for you, um, the IPFS HTTP client. And this is going to be the client that we will be using um, just as a reference for you guys to go and read more about. And remember, our goal is to create this JSON with a name, a description, and an image. Perfect. So basically, we're going to need these um, three things. So let's go to the code and start. At the top of your file, the first thing that you want to um, first define is the IPFS. Okay, so the IPFS client. And the client is going to use the create method over here that we've imported and we need to give it a kind of provider right uh, where's what what is it going to call when it's going to upload to the ipfs now a thing with ipfs that you need to understand that there's a few gateways there's infura there's ipfs.io there's a few gateways that can reach your data we are going to make use of the infura um kind of API to go and call these functions to upload our data to um, IPFS. All right, so let's go ahead and let's say, so this is going to be HTTPS um, forward slash, and then you're gonna say IPFS.infura.io, um, and then this is going to run on a port 5001, forward slash API forward slash um, V zero and that is it so that is what we're going to need to uh, kind of connect to the IPFS um, server and then we can call cool functions such as add and so on the next thing that we want to do is let's go into our app and let's define a few and uh, new variables so the new variables that I've defined is this name and description okay um, so basically these two we need for our metadata. I'm not going to make dynamic names 
I will show you in the code at the part where you can maybe create random names. You can also maybe create an input field and uh, drag the name from there. Um, but we want to focus more on getting the metadata up on IPFS. Okay. So after you've done that, also what we can do is we should think about creating a base. So I'm going to say just uh, const IPFS um, base URL. Um, and I'm going to give this HTTPS and we're going to say forward slash forward slash IPFS and this is now going to be in fura.io forward slash and then BFFS um, forward slash. Okay, so just to give you a brief example um, of what this is, usually when you call the gateway, your gateway will look like this and then you have a C, uh, CID, I believe, but it's this big hashed key that comes after this part. And that's why just I put us as the base because I don't want to retype this thing every time. Okay. Um, also, if you look on OpenSea's uh, documentation, when it comes to the IPFS, there's some part here. Um, let me quickly just have a look for you. But there is some part in here where you can see how they upload and how they want you to upload IPFS metadata. So here's the metadata standards. And if we go down, you can actually see where the meta metadata fits. And there's a specific section on IPFS that they say that um, if you integrate with IPFS, so let's go just down the section quickly. Uh, there's some traits. Uh, there we go. So they recommend that if you integrate with IPFS, that your URLs should always look like this, which is true. Now, the reason for this is because this defines that this is the IPFS and this is the CID um, that I talked about. Um, basically, the hash that points to the data. But anyway, if it's in this format, OpenSea will kind of um, see which gateway of IPFS is available and uh, get your data from there. We are not going to go into that level of, of depth in this series. I'm just going to make it simple um, and put the Infura gateway in front of the URLs. And the reason for that is because when we read the data, we don't want to go to too much hassle to go and swap stuff out now. Um, we just want to pull it back and make sure that it renders, right? But this is something to keep in mind and read up a bit more. Anyway, let's go back and let's continue. So the next thing that we want to now do is actually go and find our minter function so there we go and we want to create a function that can actually create nfts and mint the metadata so let's call or let's create a new function and call it create metadata um, should we call it create metadata and mint okay this is going to be a two in one function it's going to create the metadata on the fly and once it's happy with it it's going to mint it okay this function is going to take in three parameters it's going to take in a name it's going to take in a description and it's going to take in the image data um, and to be more specific we're going to give it the image buffer perfect now what we want to do is we write, want to write a try catch block and in this try catch block, we want to see if there's any errors. Um, if there is, we need to know about it. Um, but let's for now console.log the error if there is an error. Uh, otherwise, it should be successful. So let's go ahead and think what we need to do now. The first thing that we need to do is we need to try and add the image buffer to IPFS. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's say uh, const, let's define this in a variable and the variable is going to be added image. Okay, we're going to say this is the added image and we're going to await for the IPFS client. Okay, to finish its job and its job is to add the image. Okay. So we're going to say add this image buffer and when you are done, um, put it in this variable. So at this point, we can probably console.log this. 
Um, so let's let's do that. Let me show you step by step what's happening here. So we're going to console the log after this is done, but we need to call this function. So um, let's call it in our start minting process. Let's call it like there. We need the name, which we can get from name, which we've defined here at the top. And we've also defined a description. And now we need the image buffer. Remember that we have this get image data, which I'm now going to cut out there and put it as the parameter itself. And the reason why we can do this is because it's returning a buffer for us that we are passing in. Perfect. So now that we have this, we can run it. We can we see that there is a little bit of an error there. It's because um, we need to make this function async for it to work. Okay. So this is working. We can now go back to our DAP um, and let's refresh. Let's connect to the blockchain and let's click mint and see what happens. Perfect. As, be, as like before, we got the image buffer here, right? From a pre previous function where we get the buffer. But then we get something extra and we get this console log that has a path. Now, this path is the thing that I talked about that I said was the CID, which I wasn't sure about, but it is called CID. So I don't have to re record this video. Thank goodness. Anyway, um, perfect. So we have the path and this path is basically um, indicating where it saved this image. And to show you how it can work is we can basically now um, concatenate this with our with our gateway so how do we do that let's quickly go back to our um, program and let's work on this console.log quickly and let's put this base in front of it so we're going to log out this and let's see if this works um, so we're going to go back to our application connect mint we wait for it to upload and we see that there um, that is not uh, correct the reason for that is because it's an object and we need to say dot path so we need to actually grab the path of the added image okay so let's go ahead and save that reload connect say mint we get the data we get this url if we click on this url now um, we should get our image and indeed we did you know, obviously it's a blue uh, image with nothing on it, but if we draw on it and we do the same thing, we get another URL, we can click on it and it should reveal the image again. And this is beautiful. It means that we've uploaded an asset to the IPFS. Okay. Next, what we want to do is go back to our fun um, function and continue with our journey of creating the metadata. So we know this is kind of working to create the image part. So once again, we go back to OpenSea and if we look at um, the metadata structure, uh, let's just go down here, uh, metadata. If we look at the metadata structure, we basically have this part covered. We have the image. Now we need to create the rest. So what we can do is after this console, um, console.log, Let's have another const and let's call this uh, metadata, right? Now I'm going to call this metadata obj for object and I'm just going to create an object in here. Now the two things that we need is a, a description and a name. Well, to make it more clear for you guys, and sorry I'm explaining this in so much detail, I really want you guys to understand this. Let's copy this from here so you see that it should be an exact copy of this, right? We need to replace these uh, fields. We already have a name which is defined in the name field here at the top, but we are passing it through our function. So let's use that one, right? At this point, before you call this function here at the start minting process, this is some place where you can actually define a random name or have the name being pulled in from an input just as a side note next we want to define the description as this description right because we're going to be using this description and openc is going to be showing it and then lastly we need to now fill in the image data so we already get the image data from these uh, from this right 
So what we can do is we can simply replace that with this. And now what we should have is a beautiful um, kind of metadata object that displays the URL, the name and everything. So what we can do is let's remove this console.log and let's bring it one down. I also want to remove the buffers console.log because it's a lot of data that's getting logged out and I want to keep the logs a bit more clean. And then instead of logging out this, I'm going to say json.stringify. It's probably not necessary because it's a small object. So let's just maybe um, log it out uh, directly and let's see what happens. So if we go back to our DAP, uh, where is it? There it is. And we reload and we draw something and we say mint. We'll see that we get this um, object. And guess what, guys? This looks exactly like metadata that we need for our NFT. So congratulations, because you've just created your first metadata object. Notice that this says HTTPS IPFS.Infura. And like I explained for OpenSea, um, you can keep it like this. OpenSea standards prefer if you just keep the IPFS with two, um, like a, sem a semicolon there, or, oh, sorry, colons there, and then the CID. But for our purposes, we're going to keep on, we're going to keep this fully qualified name. The reason why they want you to do that is so that you can switch out different gateways um, and all those fancy stuff. But this will work as well. Perfect. So we're not done yet. We now need to do something interesting. Okay. So now that we have the metadata object, we're going to have to add it to the IPFS again. And the reason for this is we need to say that we now have an image, we have the metadata, and now we actually need to store the metadata. And your question might be, can we store the metadata? And indeed you can. You can store any type of file, right? So we're going to await this again. And we are going to say we want to have the IPFS client um, dot add. And this time we want to add this metadata object. But we can't just add it like this. We need to JSON stringify it first um, in order for it to become JSON. And then we will be able to upload it to the IPFS. So at this point, um, we actually can console.log this out, um, but like we did before, let's just grab our base and put it in front of it because we're going to get a URL um, and we need to add the path. Correct. Now, let's see what we get um, when we run the program again. We're going to say mint and then we get this URL. So now, finally, guys, when we click on this URL, we'll have the metadata needed for any marketplace to read our NFT. This is now not on the blockchain yet, but we are basically done uploading to the IPFS um, and also getting the proper, the proper data back. So cool. The next step that we can do to just um, now make sure everything is working and is fine is we need to kind of mint this. So how would we do this? In the next um, part, we're going to create the minting function and make sure everything is minting correctly. So going forward, we're probably going to need to use this data that we're logging out in a more constructive way, like using it to mint something. So let's create a local mint function. Uh, we will create um, the function now, but let's just call it mint. And what we're going to pass into the mint function is this actual string. So I'm going to pass the string and I'm going to log, leave the log um, just to make sure that, you know, everything is logging right. And we also can see something happening on the console. But anyway, um, that's what we need to do over there. And then we need to define and create the mint function. So let's go here to the top and actually define the mint function. So what we're going to do here is say uh, const mint is going to be equal to an arrow function. And we actually want to get the URI. Now the URI is what we are passing in here. And that's our metadata. Now the next step that we want to do is we want to have access to our smart contract. And how do we get that? Well, the blockchain, uh, if you look at the Redux, 
Now the blockchain has access to the instance of the smart contract and because we connect it, it already has access to that. So here we can say, okay, so here we can say um, blockchain dot smart contract dot methods, okay, dot mint. Okay, so this is what we are going to, to call. So, and that's because on our smart contract, we have the public mint function. So just to go back to our smart contract, here it is. So if you look down here in the mint function, we are going to call this and we need two things. We need the recipient and we need the URI. So in here, this is where you can decide where, who do you want to mint this for. Uh, we want to mint it for the person who's calling this function. So you can just call uh, blockchain.account because we're also saving that on the Redux state. And then next you pass in your URI. All right, perfect. Next, what you want to do is you want to call send. Now you need send and to define where this is from. So we're going to say this is coming from also the blockchain.account just so that blockchain knows who's calling this function. Um, in the send method, you can also put things like the value. And if you add a value, basically you're sending some um, Ethereum or Matic to the smart contract. But we, we don't want to do that because our thing is not payable. Um, but that's something you might consider. You don't want to just leave this function open for anyone to mint. I guess then there's no purpose, right? Um, perfect. So the next thing that you want to do is you want to check for errors. So you can say once um, there is an error. Okay. So you want to check for errors like this. And then we're also going to give it a, a error function. And we can also pass the error in there. And if there's an error for now, I think we can just console.log it. Uh, I don't think there's anything we want to do if there's an error right now you might want to notify the user um, if it's not successful obviously um, then you can add a then clause and in the then clause you will get a very special um, argument and this argument is the receipt right and the receipt is what you get when the transaction is successful once it's passed um, it's once it's min uh, minted basically right and mined on the blockchain that's when you get the receipt back so here's where you actually want to um, if you have buttons that was loading you need to disable them which we'll get to but the important thing that we want to do is just uh, maybe console.log to us that this was successful and maybe we can even just log the receipt for now and basically once that is done it's done our mint function is complete so we're ready to go and test this out um, there's no way for us to see if this is going to be on the blockchain, but at least we can see if we get an error or if we get a receipt. Um, so let's quickly have a look at that. So we can go back to our app um, or DAP and then say connect. We're going to draw something. We're going to say mint. It's going to load and that's something we need to implement, right? But the fact that this pops up means that uh, we've done something correctly and it wants to mint. Now, there is an error, insufficient fund, and that's because we, de we haven't connected our account yet. So let's just reject this. Let's open up MetaMask and let's make sure that our account is connected to our DAP. All right. So it says they're not connected. We can click and say connect and make sure that this account that's running on the local blockchain is connected. So if we say uh, mint again, um, it should pop up MetaMask. And once we say confirm, it's it's mined and it's ready now just keep something in mind that the ganache cli is instant and it's not that instant on the blockchain because the blockchain still needs to mine um, the blocks so it might take some time so you need to implement some kind of loading mechanism to show the user that we are loading things um, so that's what we're going to do next but you can see here on the logs that there's our link like before and here's our receipt, our receipt, right? And you can see that it did um, create a successful um, NFT. And obviously, with the metadata that we passed through, it should be on this NFT. There is a way that we're going to check it. But uh, first, let's just get a few things loading so that we don't um, just 
wait for it and we know what the program is doing. We have this working. We actually want to inform the user when things are loading on our app. So let's go ahead and do that. Make sure that you have imported use state at the top and then we're going to define a bunch of variables. So we need a variable for loading and the convention is you type in the, the variable such as loading and then set loading uh, when you're doing use state. So we're going to say use state, this is local state and it's going to be initialized to false. Then we're going to copy this two more times because we need more state. We're going to need a kind of a status um, variable and status over there and this is also maybe not going to be false but maybe this is going to be initialized to empty and then we're also going to have tokens and the tokens I will refer to as NFTs so maybe I must do that so let's call these NFTs okay um, that's pretty cool so the next thing that we want to do is this shouldn't be initialized to false, but a empty array. Um, and then we're good to go. So the next thing that we really want to do is we want to indicate if something is loading. Okay, so let's go and check how we can do that. Firstly, we need to create a, a element to tell us that something is loading. So let's create another title, but let's call this the text uh, maybe description instead of title so it's a bit smaller and let's just actually put a loading statement in there so let's just say boom 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 this is loading and this will show up whenever this is loading we also want to make sure that there's enough space between that text and the bottom one so we're going to add a spacer we can add a spacer small um, small should be fine just like that then in order for it to only pop up when things are loading, we can maybe check the variable and see if it is loading. And if it is, then we want to display all of this. If not, we actually want to just uh, ignore it, right? So we're going to say we don't want it to show. You can't just export uh, a bunch of elements in React like this. So we need to create a fragment around this. So this is how you create a fragment by opening and closing empty ones but this is a good um, um, starting point so it's moaning about false it's probably because I'm spelling this wrong sorry for my spelling but talking and coding like this sometimes messes uh, messes up the spelling but anyway um, so okay we have got this loading over here and this should pop up when everything's are loading when should we set things to loading so let's think about this let's grab our set loading and let's go down and let's think about it well first of all when we click on the button mint it kicks off this function and once this function is kicked off it's going to start kicking off um, the create data so i think a good entry point for setting this um, loading to to true is actually maybe over here um, so we can say well this is the beginning of the process so let's set it to true here obviously if you have some extra if statements and so on try catch blocks then you can do it in here and set it to false if something breaks but this um, generally is a fine function to not have it in but anyway it's good to always check next it's going into this um, create metadata function which it's going to try and catch and do a bunch of stuff so maybe just maybe it might be a better idea to move this loading from there to this function as well as loading we want to set the status because at this point we're going to now say uploading to ipfs right you don't have to tell this to the client but i'm going to put it in here because we are developing it right so let's say um, uploading to ipfs Okay, that is pretty cool and we need to make sure that that's communicated. So again, let's go down to where we've added this loading bar and let's actually put another um, text in there and let's say this is the status. Um, sorry. So the status and we're going to say if status but this time we're going to say if status is not equal to empty string 
um, then we're going to actually render whatever status we say we want to see. Okay, that is perfectly fine. So we can scroll up again. Um, where were we? Yeah. Now we need to define when do we set these things to false? When do we set the loading to false? Well, obviously, when we receive an error, we want to set um, that to false and also maybe update the status. Okay, so we can put this in here and say, well, um, I don't know, let's just put error and this will be displayed to the user. You can type something out nice over there. But we also want to make the loading false because we want the loading to stop, right? And indicate that to the user. And then lastly, where we also want this is right after the mint has happened. But now, um, what if something breaks in the minting process? So again, you can either stop it here, but I would suggest let's go to the minting process. And once this is successful, right, we're going to stop it over there. But this time, we're going to say success um, fully minted your NFT. Okay, that is perfectly fine. Um, and then again, let's just put it there with the error. And let's just say this is an error. Okay, so perfect. Right, and now we've got some loading state and some state this is running. Um, let's check it out on our app. So when we do this, you can say connect and pay attention to this part of the mint button. Um, if I click mint, it says loading, uploading to IPFS, which is perfectly fine. Then we get our check and it says it's going to throw an exception. Um, there's an exception in the code. I don't know if it's because we're not connected again, um, but it seems like we are connected. So I'm going to try it again. I don't know why this is happening. Let's just see. This is the total. Um, yeah, something is definitely not right here. So I have to double check that. But anyway, uh, we see that the error is definitely working. Let's see if we can debug this. Um, obviously, there's no bug there. You know what? Let's go ahead and mint it. And maybe we might see where the error is coming from. So I'm going to go ahead and mint this. It failed, obviously, and then it printed out this nice message. And it says, um, warning, the token already minted. Okay, that is very interesting. So we need to actually now go and check our minting function um, and verify if that actually is working. Because I was under the impression that we did this correctly. So let's go back to our smart contract. And let's just quickly verify that our minting um, that our minting thing works. So let's quickly see. So there's the new ID. There's the current. Aha. So that is the problem over here. So as you can see here, we are getting the new ID from uh, from the current token ID, but we're never incrementing it. So after everything has happened. You need to say increment like so. Perfect. And just shows you that you can pick up errors in a smart contract. So always check them. Um, because this is an update, we'll need to go into the terminal, control C, and then go and run truffle migrate dash dash reset to redeploy this new smart contract onto, um, onto the blockchain onto our local blockchain. And then once that's done, we can say yarn start again. Perfect. So let's just wait for this to start up. Um, while we're waiting, we can go back to our local host. This will start up and we will see it in action. It's always good to check your smart contracts before you go and deploy them and also run tests and write more tests. Anyway, needless to say, let's try this again and click on mint. It says loading, uploading to IPFS. Everything looks good. We're going to say confirm. It was minted successfully. And there we see successfully minted NFT. Now, this is perfect. And um, we basically have done it, guys. We have minted it. And it's on the blockchain. And this will actually show up on OpenSea. But we're not done yet. In the next part, we actually want to render 
our NFTs down here. So we ourselves can see that we actually have minted it and we can get that data back. Okay, so the time has come where we actually need to display the data that we have on the smart contract and the NFTs onto our DAP. How can we do that? So we know that we have this data that we're putting in where we got the name from previously. Well, we can go and update our data reducer and actions and make it actually call and go and get all the NFTs in our smart contract. If you can recall, if you go to the contracts.sol, um, our smart contract, if you can recall, we had this function get all tokens. And that's exactly the function that we are going to be using to get all of our tokens in an array. Now, basically, we have to go to the data.reducer first, and we need to define an extra parameter here at the top. So maybe let's call this all tokens and we're going to initialize it to an empty array. So we're gonna do that. And then once we load this successfully, we're gonna keep the name there um, just for the time being. But now we can define that all tokens will come from the action.payload.alltokens. Let's keep them the same name so we don't get confused. Once we've added these two lines, we can go back to the data actions and see exactly where we are pulling in the name. Now we can basically copy this function, paste it, so that we can now define the all tokens uh, from the smart contract over here. Now, in our smart contract, in our blockchain, um, just a brief a pause here for a second, you might wonder what the store.blockchain is. The store is something I import here from Redux which holds all the state. It even holds all the data state that we're working with. But we can say, wait, store, get state, and get any of the Redux state that we need. And we need the smart contract instance from it. We're gonna call the methods call, and then the actual method that we're going to call. When you're calling methods, you don't have to uh, append this. I'll show you now. You can just say dot, um, all well what is our function's name let's go back to our smart contract it's get all tokens so you can just say methods dot all tokens and you just call it like that um, sorry like this dot call perfect you don't put the um, brackets there the reason why the brackets are there for name is because name was a variable um, that we wanted to get access to this is a, a method call so that's what we want to do there and then lastly, on the success dispatch, we want to add this um, tokens to all tokens because that's the tokens we're going to be updating in our reducer. In JavaScript, if you have the same name as your um, key, you don't have to put that there. You can omit it, and that's what we are going to do. Now we have um, our actual data bringing back all the NFTs from our smart contract. So let's take a, a step back and see what is needed still in our app.js file. So let's close the Redux, let's close the contracts, let's go back to the app.js. We've got these two, um, these two states that we've defined and this NFTs, but we're not using the NFTs yet and this is what we're going to be implementing um, right now. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to first fetch the metadata. Now, what we can do is we can say, well, use effect, let's create another use effect. A use effect runs um, when the component starts and you can define how many times it runs by passing in dependencies over here or leaving it empty, but then it will create an infinite loop. So it's good to put at least the empty square brackets. But we do have a dependency. We want to rerun this function every time data.alltokens changes. The all tokens that we just defined and what do we want it to rerun well we need to kind of create a function that we're going to uh, call to go and fetch all the metadata for us so we're going to call it fetch uh, meta uh, metadata maybe this is not the good, best name for it um, because we're trying to get all the metadata um, from our nfts so let's say maybe four NFTs, right? Uh, maybe that's a better name. 
um, for this. But anyway, let's go and define it um, up here. So what we're going to do is we first need to say const const the name and is equal to an arrow function. And it's not going to take anything, but what it is going to do is we're going to set the tokens. Uh, well, we have NFTs now. We're going to set the token, uh, the NFTs array to empty. So there it is, and it's already empty. But every time this loads, we want to empty it out. Um, later on, you can work with smarter ways of keeping the data there, but we're going to empty it out when we load it. Um, next, what we want to do is we want to target the data, which is the Redux state, and say, well, grab all the tokens for us and then do it for each, right? So we're going to do it for each on all those elements and we're going to call it E for element or let's just call it EL. Actually, let's call it NFT. Sorry, uh, when I code, I think a lot and I change a lot of stuff, but we're going to call this NFT and what we want to do now is we want to do a fetch because if we can recall um, let me just do this quickly well it's not going to run because this is not defined yet so let's just uncomment that perfect uh, let's wait for this to run uh, if we can recall what we get back from the IPFS right is this URL and when, when we call our um, smart contract to get all our NFTs, it comes back with, with a list of these um, URLs. So we need to actually do our own fetch in our app to go and fetch our metadata. Uh, well, we already um, have the URL, but we need to fetch this metadata and then we need to display this image. And that's why it's probably um, a bit more of the difficult part of this t tutorial to explain but just follow along and we'll see how far we get perfect so fetch metadata is going to be kicked off here so we're going to loop through all the tokens that we have we're going to open it up and we're going to do a simple um, fetch call now this fetch call you need to pass in a, a URL but we've got our NFT now that we've defined here and our NFT has a URI um, on it. How do we know that our NFT would have an URI on it? If we go to the smart contract and we scroll all the way up, remember this is what we're returning. We are returning a struct with an ID and a URI. And that is where we will be getting this list from. And so this list will have elements with those two fields on it. Perfect. In here, what we can say is we can put a, a then clause. So we basically want to just um, create or make this into JSON. So we can say response. This is pretty standard stuff. And here we just want to return this response.json because we are returning JSON. And then we want another then, um, then to capture the data. Um, okay, so we want that and then in here we're going to specify um, the data. So this we can probably call metadata because the metadata um, is the JSON that's getting returned. So this metadata should have the name, the ID and the image, right? So the next thing that we want to do now is we want to start appending to this um, thing okay so how can we do this well we can say set nfts and it's it's not very good to to always set it directly but what you can do is you can say well take the um the previous state right take the previous state and then what we want you to do is actually return something so we want to return an array because this state takes an array and it might get complex from here, but just keep, um, please uh, just follow along. So what you're going to do is you're going to extract the previous state. Okay, you're going to extract the previous state from here, meaning that um, we're going to say append all the previous state that you had before, but then append another one. And the other one that we want you to append is just a simple object where we have an ID element, which will be the NFT.ID. And we also want another one, which is the um, 
metadata. So metadata, right? And this is going to be simple. The metadata is going to be the actual metadata um, that we have here. All right. So that's basically what you want to do there. Um, we can console.log this now as success and all these things, but um, I think it's, it's perfectly fine. Um, let's just quickly see where this if, um, where this then ends so that we can just say uh, catch. Okay, it's always good to catch your errors and maybe just uh, log them out, especially if a DAP is live because um, do you want a way to kind of debug when your users struggle and help them along and even know what the problem is, um, what they, you know, what they're occurring. But that being said, so we have this um, fetch metadata now set up. Hopefully when we run it, nothing breaks. Let's just verify, let's reload it, let's connect and something did break. So let's see what it is. So it's basically saying that for each is not a function. Now, I wonder why it would say that. So let's go back and see why. Now, where are we using it for each? We are using it in here. Now, tokens, all tokens should be an array. So I don't know why it is uh, complaining, uh, but let's just go and double check. So let's go to our Redux state. Let's go and make sure that we have that array over there and it is a uh, empty array by default. Here we do get the tokens from here. Um, we do get a call. And this makes me wonder if we do need that thing. I just want to do a test and see something. Uh, let me just see something. Uh, okay. <laughs> so please dismiss what I said before. You do need to call it like this. Um, the reason for that is because it might have parameters. Um, I was mixing it up with something else. But anyway, um, that fixed the problem for us um, and also makes it work perfect. Now, if we go back to the app.js, what we wanted to do is just see if it doesn't break, but we need a way of displaying this um, data. Obviously, you want to um, show your NFTs that, well, show the person's NFTs that they have minted. But before we can do that, there's a problem that we have when we draw. When we draw and a user wants to clear it, they basically have to refresh the page. And that's not very good user experience. So just as an extra bonus, I think we should just add this. Uh, what you can do is you can create a simple function. And this is going to be very um, fast. We can just say clear canvas like so. Okay, we've defined that. We don't need to pass a parameter, but what we do need is we need the reference to the to the element. So I can just say canvas um, element is going to be equal to the element ref. Remember the element ref and we say current. And once we have that, we can basically say canvas element dot clear like so. And the reason why we can say that is because um, this library that we've imported, this um, actual object has an underlying function called clear. So we can just call it on there. We're going to need a button to clear this. So let's go and duplicate our minting button. But we're going to do another thing. We're going to wrap this in a container for ourselves. So let's grab these two buttons that we have. Let's put them in this container. Perfect. Let's call this um, clear. And also we're going to call the clear canvas instead of mint, right? Perfect. We're going to need probably a little bit of a space between them. Um, like space small is fine. Um, you can define, you can define your UI later on. I'm just going to do it a bit of rough, roughly. Um, there they are. Okay. So there we go. We have mint and clear. They are not sitting in the center at all. And a good rule of thumb to check what you're doing is put a background color. Um, yeah, put a background color. I'm just going to use pink. And then also let me flex this um, to one. And because I want these things to go in a row, I'm going to say flex direction FD. And this is because we've specified this 
uh, we want this to be a row and it is going to flex and we can say justify content should be center perfect with these settings it should align um, let's just verify perfect it aligns it's uh, perfectly center but there's this big space so I, I take it that's because we've put a flex one so I just want to do that take the flex one out and there we go that's perfect they're sitting right right there we can take this background color off um, and we are good to go let's test out the, the clearing functionality before we go and render the array so if we go back um, in our app we should be able to connect we should be able to draw and we should be able to clear it and it's working perfectly the um, the other part in the application where you would like to clear your um, canvas is once it's finished minted the nft so remember here after it's minted and we have a successful minting experience the last thing that you can do as part of the cleanup is just call clear canvas this will allow you to run the application and have people mint something right and then after they've minted it it clears it because it's already on the blockchain now so we can say confirm and watch it clears the canvas but it does give us back the url and if we click on the url uh, which is the metadata right um, which we're going to be returning and we click on the image we can see that that is actually the image perfect let's go and render our array we are so close to be done so let's just push ahead and do the last little bit of a part so the last part that we need to look at is actually rendering the nfts so we can see what has been rendered now how do we get to that part well we can see that we have our list of nfts that's been defined so we can go and grab that variable go all the way down to where we have our signature canvas maybe give it a little bit of a space so like i mentioned we're not going to focus on styling here but um, i would love to make the styling tutorials where i get to show you guys how to make killer styles but anyway um, that's for another day we're going to say nfts dot map okay now we want to map through all of these nfts how do we do that let's think about it we can say well we will have a nft and we're also going to have an index and we need to return something what are we going to return well firstly just to even test out if this is going to work because we don't know if it's going to work we can go ahead and do a test with just plain old text so let's go and select a title text would be fine and we're going to define um, an ending statement for this and then in here i actually want to render the nft's name so i'm going to say nft.name perfect once i've done that we can also put a key on uh, a key on the text otherwise the compiler might complain so we're going to do that we're going to refresh we're going to connect to our blockchain and we're going to mint and let's see if it even works so we've connected to the blockchain um, it says it's minted but i don't see anything happening so let's go and debug so the next thing that we need to do is debug what's happening so i think a good way of debugging is actually um, logging the stuff out so let's go ahead and log out nfts this will give us a great insight on what's actually happening in our application we can see that the array that we rendering out is empty at the moment once we say connect we can actually see it building up now this is very interesting because at first when it loads an nft it it has it and then it gets another one and then it gets another one and this is how it's loading the array not the best way which you can update on a later stage but it should have um, the stuff in it the reason why it's not displaying is because we just said nft.name but we should have referenced nft.metadata.name and that's the beauty of the debugging so we can perfectly see where our error is and we can rectify it so it should be 
metadata.name. All right. So when we get back to our application, we should actually see those previous NFTs here. So it says um, Jason, 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 um, which also doesn't seem correct, but uh, we will debug this just now. Let's actually do that again. Um, I just want to make sure that you guys have a tutorial that you can be proud of and know what's happening. I don't want you guys to be stuck. So let's just spend some time debugging and see why is that saying Jason and not the proper names. So I'm going to open this up. Let's open a metadata. And it says Jason. That is very interesting that the name would be Jason and there's no other metadata on this. It means that it didn't really put the right metadata um, or actually return to us the correct metadata. So some some place in our application, we did something wrong. Now, there could be two places where we could have gone wrong. And let's check the first place. This would be in our minting function. So in our minting function, before we send the URI, let's go and, and log it, right? So let's say console.log, and I'm going to say this is the URI, and we're going to put a space with the URI and let's run our function. Let's go ahead and restart and say mint. And this is basically what we get. I'm not going to go and say confirm. I'm going to reject it, but we do have the URI. So at this point, we do have a URI. I'm going to click on it just to make sure that it is working. So open in a new tab and that looks fine to me. So it's not the minting function. It might be the function that actually returns the data to us. So let's go and check out that. So now what we want to do is let's go to our data reducer and go to our actions actually. Um, and then let's go and actually console.log all the tokens. Okay, so we're going to log this out right off the bat. So I'm going to refresh and see what happens when we call. And there we can see all of the tokens. We can see that this basically have, has everything we need. Now, this means that our blockchain function also is busy working, which means that our problem is not sitting in here, but actually in the app.js, if we go down, remember we had this fetch metadata where we actually fetched the NFTs. Well, this is where the error is sitting. So let's quickly check what is happening. So we go into our tokens and we go and say for each of the NFTs, we want to do a fetch and that is perfectly fine. Now, I wonder if it's because of this response.json. I think it needs to be Jason with a bracket. So I think that's where I went wrong. Uh, we're going to we're going to see now. But anyway, um, before we test this out, guys, I just want to um, tell you guys that I do make these tutorials scripting it live. So if I do make a mistake, um, please forgive me. But also, please be, be glad because it means that uh, we get to debug the things properly. And there we go. It's properly debugged. It looks freaking cool um, and it's working. So I'm very excited on how that turned out. The last thing that we can do is actually go back to our code. And this is the last thing that we're going to do. So <laughs> stick around. We're going to cut this out. We're going to open up these brackets because we want a bit more space. We're going to say that we need a container. So we're going to say s dot container. After we have a container, uh, we can fill it with a few things. And the first thing that I want to fill it in with is the exact thing, the name. But we want to move this key now one up because uh, we want to give it some space. We also want to give this container some, some padding. So what I'm going to do is just include a 24 pixel padding right there, which is fine, maybe 16. Um, cool. Uh, so, so far we have a container with the name, but remember we have the image data with us now. So this is actually the beauty and this is what OpenSea and all the um, marketplaces do. 
uh, when rendering your NFTs. So they grab this and it's good practice to have alt text. What we can use the alt text, well, what we can call the alt text is maybe the metadata name as well, right? Um, and then we need a source. So th the source is going to be the NFT metadata and then the URI. Okay, well, not URI, the image, because our metadata has an image, and that is it. So the last thing is just a little bit of a width, so we can see our image. And once this is loaded, it would be ready. So there's one thing that I actually want to just lastly implement before we run this, and that's like a little loader bar, because if this is... Um, if this is loading, we want it to show um, it loading, right? So we have a little loading section up there, which I'm just literally going to copy and paste. So I'm going to grab this and I'm going to come down here to our NFTs. I'm going to take away this bracket and I'm going to paste this in there. And then I'm going to put um, this uh, uh, colons in there. I just want to read if this will make sense. So what we need to do is we need to leave that there and instead of um, loading, we're going to say if the data is loading. Okay. The reason why I want to do that is because when we refresh, we want to see the loading here at the bottom too. This was very quick, so you couldn't see it, um, but it did indeed load it. So I'm very happy with how that turned out. And um, yeah, guys, you guys can now go and reuse this kind of um, NFT software to go and create uh, your NFTs. Please make sure to always add extra security to your smart contracts. You don't want people to just randomly um, break your smart contracts and take advantage of it. So be very sure when you do your own things. But um, yeah, that's just what I wanted to mention. So this is working and I'm very glad. Lastly, guys, thank you so much. We are going to test this out one more time. And what I'm going to do is doing something maybe special while I talk for the last bit, because um, there is something I want to inform you guys about. And that is the amount of success that um, we've been having on the blockchain is tremendous. And I just want to also say thank you for you guys. As an artist, as a developer, as someone that just started their YouTube career, it really means a lot that you guys comment, support, and always, you know, uplift me in a way where it feels good to show you guys code and it feels good to teach. And as long as that's there, I will always be making YouTube videos. So thank you so much. Let's mint this guy over here and see if our program is working. So MetaMask will pop up. We can say confirm. It will mint and say it's successful and then it will populate there. Um, again, we need to probably make that call happen. So last thing that you can do is you see here where it says um, not fetch NFTs, but fetch from the blockchain, this dispatch. OK, um, once it's done minting, the last thing you want to do, and this is the very last thing I promise, um, is that so let's just quickly do this again we're going to run it this time i'm not going to draw the most fancy thing but maybe we'll draw this bunny uh we're going to say mint we're going to say cool confirm and what it's going to do is you'll see it populate and there it goes automatically here at the bottom and there's the guy anyway because it's now a blockchain right but it's our local blockchain running on ganache cli if you want to deploy this to the matic main network you can go and check out the previous tutorial on the game section, especially the ending video where we deploy. You can do it the same way that I've done it there. But I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Please go and check out Safe Lips. Please go and check out Hash Lips. And I think if you guys go and check out our projects, what we actually do on the blockchain, you will also be loving what we're doing. Go and join our channels. It's always a great way for me to get in touch with you guys as well. Um, you can find the channels on this website. There they are. And as always, thank you so much. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I have many more to come. Cheers for now.